So we're going to have a look at a few filters now and for efficiency rather than necessarily make things from scratch I'm starting off with some existing kind of partially built patches uh, which we can then play around with a little bit. Uh, so again these will be available either on Blackboard or on through some link to my website. The first one I want to look at is the Reson tilde object. We have already looked at this so I don't need to look at it in much detail but anyway it's a resonant filter it has uh, four inputs, one of which is the main sound that you want to affect. Uh, again, a frequency and a Q control, all of which can be controlled by arguments that you can put in as starting values. So I'm going to go back to our drum loop, our standard one, just because we know what it sounds like. A little bit hard to hear, it's a bit better. Um, so at the moment it's uh, got a gain of 1, its frequency is 200 by default, and a uh, Q of 23. So obviously we can change those by sending values into there. We could do a filter sweep using the line tilde object. And of course we could do any kind of manipulation of these input values depending on what, what we choose to use. We could put an envelope on them as we did before making drums. We could use a cycle object or any other oscillator to provide a, an LFO. So in this case if I were to send a cycle object through a scale tilde, scale tilde is extremely useful and it saves you an awful lot of uh, maths. So uh, changing the values from minus 1 to 1, which is cycle's normal range, to whatever value we choose. So if we wanted this uh, change from 200 to 10,000 hertz, we could put that in uh, to the scale object uh, and use that to replace the line object and get scale to oscillate through those values. And if we knew, I can't find out the uh, the beat rate for this particular loop here because it, uh, th this is a kind of pre-made sub-patch. Uh, but if I did know it, then I could maybe somehow get the cycle object to oscillate at an appropriate speed. Anyway, so there's there's your Reson object. And once again, we, we, we did have a look at it in relation to either oscillators or the noise object. And here... I've got it along with a bunch of presets, so they all produce a bunch of different interesting drum-like or percussive sounds. Anyway, you can explore those in the patch that's, uh, that's online if you want to. So uh, another way this is um, a patch which is not my own, and I hope he doesn't mind me using it. This is a patch by uh, Eric Onya, um, who is a lecturer who was at Birmingham when I was a student there. Uh, he's now, I believe, in Basel, in Switzerland. Um, a, a extremely talented man, um, and uh, a nice guy as well. Uh, so, this is a kind of emulation for percussion sounds which are a great deal more sophisticated than in the patch that or the sub-patch that we just looked at. Uh, in this case what's happened is that three instruments or three percussion instruments have been analysed, their spectra have been analysed and on the basis of that these various numbers have been derived which determine the frequency, gain and Q values for a series of reson objects. So let's have a quick listen to how it sounds um, and then we'll have a look at the guts. So turn on DAC, this is an old way of turning on the DAC, not using the easy DAC object. And we will choose one of these instruments, so this is the cymbalum. Uh, and we've got, and this bit will be familiar to you, it's an envelope object. And what we're doing is we're sending a, an impulse of noise uh, through, uh, well this is, this is a, a type of filter but we won't worry about this too much at the moment, we'll have a look at it in a bit. 
um, through to a series of the reson objects. Um, and you'll see that all of this, uh, these unpack objects are unpacking these various values that are in these message boxes here and determining, as I say, the gain, frequency and Q for these reson objects, of which there are eight per uh, channel, so for the left and the right channel, so this is in stereo. Um, and you get what is a, quite a convincing ringing percussive sound, in that case a cymbalum. If we try the cowbell, there's that, and then vibes. And what's nice about this, as opposed to synthesis, sort of additive synthesis from the ground up, this is obviously subtractive synthesis, is that because we've got a noise input, the noise is a, a, a random sound. So it's always going to be different at different points in time. And therefore, when we uh, hit this button, the characteristics of that impulse are going to be slightly different. So each of these percussive sounds are going to sound slightly different every time they're heard. Um, making them sound more realistic. So this is a, a way of using several reson objects uh, to essentially model the spectral characteristics of particular instruments. So that's a little bit more about the reson tilde object. Sticking with resonant filters, let's uh, close this one down. You notice that in that previous example um, we had a series of resonant filters that were all used concurrently, but in fact Max provides a bank of filters in a single object, um, and it's this one, the FFFB object, and I've stolen this from the help file. So I'll, I'll send in a noise sound to begin with, a noise. And what we've got is a series of frequencies, a series of cues and a series of gains. So all of the input value types that we had with the reson object are the same here, but they are reaching the FFFB object as lists by means of the multi-slider object, which we have come across before. Um, so what we're doing is, if you notice, if I um, connect up the output of any of these and change it, you'll see that you get a list out, the numbers of which change uh, depending on you know, what, I, what I change in this multi-sided object. Those go through uh, this object, which is prepend, and so we get freak uh, freq0, so that tells the FFFB object, what type of parameter it is dealing with. I'm not quite sure why it's got a zero after that. And that is being sent to the FFFB object and uh, dealing with each of the eight filters that are specified by this argument here. Same is true of Q. So this multi slider has again eight sliders in it, and each one gives us a Q for the various resonant filters. And the same with the uh, gains here. So you can control each of those separate resonant filters in the bank uh, independently using these uh, multi-slider objects. And by the way, if I wanted to go back to the original, I can send a list into these multi-slider objects that will, that will take us back to our original values. And note, by the way, that each one of those resonant filters has its own independent output. Um, so you could send those uh, wherever you want to. You could uh, aggregate them all into a single output, or as they've done here, you could split up the resonant filters so that they all have a separate um, output, or in this case, I've sent to only the two. So that's the uh, resonant filter bank. Down here, I've fiddled about with it a little bit. I'm using the filter bank as kind of vocoder-like device. Uh, so here I'll have an input which might be my drum loop, for example. Um, and that's okay, so it's quite quiet. There we go. So here 
what we've got is the keyboard uh, sending a value which has been converted to a frequency um, and we are using the Uzi object which basically sends out uh, as many values as you've got in its argument uh, as soon as it possibly can. So out of the left outlet it spits out 32 bangs as quickly as it possibly can and then out of the right hand outlet it sends numbers from 1 to 32. Um, and each of those numbers being multiplied by 110. So 1 times 110 is going to be 110, 2 times 110 is going to be 220, 3 times 110 is going to be 330, then you get 440, 550, etc. Which, uh, if you remember from your acoustics introduction, you'll understand as being harmonically related. So that's our, I mean, this is just a default value for this multiplication object, but each of these uh, notes will send me a different value, starting value, which will be multiplied x number of times, so we get harmonics for each of our the notes that we put in here. So let's put in a... So for the note C, which is a C a few octaves below middle C, this looks like middle C but it isn't, you get 130 point 81279 hertz, so that is being multiplied by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, up to 32, which gives us all of the harmonics related to 130.8 hertz. Um, and so each one of those is being sent to control a different resonant filter, um, all, all of which have a Q that is 1044, rather arbitrarily it seems, uh, but I obviously chose that number because it isolated each pitch, pitch rather well, and then each has a a gain of 1. Um, so all of those are being sent to the uh, resonant filter bank and we hear this imposed pitch on the samples that we send in. Um, so if I choose a different sound, like the rain stick for example, and we get quite a nice kind of pitched character applied to that sound. So um, just one way of using the uh, resonant filter bank. Um, you may well think of others, um, but again this these patches will be available to you uh, if you want to uh, grab them and, and fiddle with them uh, and maybe implement them in your own patches.